Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And today we're going to go through some of the things that I learned at the Canadian Porcelain Art School. Um, and it was in Kingston, Ontario. And um, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I think the Canadian School did an excellent job. Uh, the people who put it together, they just did an excellent job. The, the banquet was lovely. Um, oh, the classrooms were excellent. The lighting was great. Um, we each had a full table, actually two tables across, which was nice to work on. And um, it gave us plenty of space to spread out. Um, the dorms were nice, very, very nice. And so I really can't complain. We ate at the cafeteria there. The food was good. They had a Tim Hortons on site, and I never really understood why Tim Hortons was such a big deal, but they made us fresh hot donuts that mor those mornings, and they were to die for. It's different in Canada. It really is. So what I would recommend, first of all, for you is that you get yourself a, a, a booklet. Um, I have what I call a chubby book. It's a little book. It's chubby, and I wrote on the front of it all the schools and workshops that I attend. And I have as far back as Columbia when I took from Forget Porter, my very first time there. And this actually comes in very handy. In fact, it did at this Canadian school because I was able to look up something that uh, someone was talking about. And I said, no, I don't think that's the way it is. And I looked it up and was able to contribute. So, I, you know, this is a godsend. And if you write everything down, then you should share those notes. And the whole point of sharing the notes is that you, you don't keep China painting a secret anymore. One of the things that I learned was that I took from Lorna McLaren. She, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and Lorna McLaren is one of those people that is a super detailed person. And I am a bottom liner. So it, it was a whole different approach, and I have no problem with that because I need to do the, I need to learn more about detail. Uh, I paint I paint with and my my audience I think for the most part, although I know it's not. Um, I aim for beginners, but I get a lot of people who've been painting a long time too. So most of what I'm showing you today is probably a little more advanced than beginners, but it's a good um, information. Uh, about some of the techniques you learn the longer you've been painting. And the first thing she told us was, she says, test your paints. If a teacher says you need certain colors, test your paints. And what she did was she tested them over here and she went, this is the first coat, second coat, third coat on all these paints. And you see how she did that? And she, as she says in the note here, you may have the same color the teacher has, they just call it something different. Then she took those colors that she had tested and tried them on. This is the, the bird, uh, the bo body of the bird. And she tested them in three values on there to see which three values look the best together. So she said, if you're gonna do a big project, this is a good way to do it. And I thought that was um, really interesting. She also told us, that the uh, a book that she uh, refers to quite a bit is um, Curious Painter. And I don't think I have it. I'll have to check. But um, if you're looking for a book to refer to, she says that's an excellent reference book. Um, okay. So many people asked about um, what does uh, Lorna McLaren use for her medium. And this is her medium. I bought some. It is eight parts Copaiba. The dark copaiba, you can see that. One part lavender and one part cloves. Okay, slowing things down a little if you're writing it down. Um, she says if it's too oily, add copaiba. If it's too dry, she says add mineral oil. Now mineral oil is not in this at all. She said that uh, adding mineral oil to it will help make it less dry. So that was uh, one thing that I learned from her. Another thing I learned from her is that when she finally sketches out what she wants to do and she's tracing it for her students, she uses what we call page protector. And she puts the picture in here and then she traces right on the plastic so she gets all the detail. And she does it on this. I do it on um, um, plant the the overheads, 
the overheads, they're plastic. And then she takes this and she transfers it, she traces it with tracing paper and then finally puts it on her piece. So that's another hint if you're trying to get all the details, that's something you could do maybe. Another thing she told us, which was just as we were painting this piece, now here's mine. It's not finished. I wanted the black all through the background. And obviously, I think I have another fire or two just to do on the lower part of the bird and um, the branches and everything. But I just, I didn't have a chance to get to it. And this is for me, so it was no problem. She did tell us this black, um, if it's too thick for some reason, it's likely to chip off. And she said, in that case, if you're not going to fire again and you're not going to be washing it a lot, or use a... Um, a Sharpie, and just go over those black areas. The best thing, of course, is to take and put black paint on there and re refire it. But if you don't want to fire again, um, that that's another tip that she gave us. Never do a solid line on a leaf. She said solid lines are not, you don't really see them in nature. You see everything broken up. I didn't even think about that, but I think she's probably right. Okay, another tip she gave us, which was excellent, um, on Pinterest, and I actually do this, and I'd forgotten that I did it. And so um, I found this really, really helpful to remind me. They have um, colors. They have paint colors. And so they give you, like, the picture, and then they give you all the colors. See that? So let's say that you're trying to look for something and you want to know what colors go with it, you can look up a color on here. And of course they aren't called the same as ours, but I mean, let's, let's face it. This could be, um, this could be a deep blue green. I mean, a shading green. Um, I don't know what these are. They're kind of, I don't use those colors very often. Let's see here. That could be a warm gray or a, a silver gray. Um, you know, th this could be delphinium. This could be baby blue. So it gives you ideas of how you can do this. Now, my Pinterest page, my personal one, I have these on. And I'm going to switch it over to my other Pinterest page if I haven't already. Because I think that that's a valuable um, thing to have on there so that you can use it as a reference if you need to. Oh, okay. So now we're going to get into what some of the work that we're going to do. Um, we used Resist and we used... MX-54, and those are what I'm going to show you today. This is Resist. You say, oh, what is that saran wrap or plastic wrap underneath the lid? According to Lorna, if you do this and then screw the lid on, it will never dry up. We'll see. Um, and this I got from, and it's I think it's Canadian money, but I got this uh, from Saul, and it has uh, MX-54. And it's, uh, it's oil that you use for porcelain painting, but it dries very fast. And so I'm going to show you how to use this today because you don't really find much information about it anywhere. Okay. So how did I do those leaves in the background with all the black around them? Let me show them to you again for those of you that just came on in case you didn't see them. How did I do these? Everybody wanted to know, how did you get the black? It's called wet grounding. I thought it was something else. I didn't really know what we were going to be doing. So, uh, And I've never, never understood what wet grounding was. And it's so simple. So let me show you. The first thing you need to do is you need to put on resist. And you don't want to put the resist on uh, too heavy or too thin. If you put it on too thin, you'll never be able to get it off. If you put it on too heavy, you get lines in the grounding where you have the black background you, or any color. You can use any color, but you'll get lines in that. And so you want to be very careful about how much you put on. So um, one of the things that um, you need to do is uh, get yourself, uh, it's water um, soluble. So you want to get yourself some water and you want to uh, open your resist. Now I have one that's hard. And if it's hardened up like this, where it's just gum, 
What you do is you put, uh, get a dropper, put a drop or two of water in it, stir it with a toothpick, and then, or put it in the microwave for just seconds. I mean, one or two seconds. Take it out, stir it with a toothpick, and keep repeating and repeating that until it gets the same consistency as this one. This one flows pretty easy. Okay, so that's how you can get your um, resist to loosen up if it's already gunky. And then put this, this plastic wrap over it when you close it. Um, leave the lid off when it's in the microwave. It's a metal lid. And don't put this in the microwave if it's a plastic jar. You ha can only put the, the glass jars in the microwave. Okay. Put some on this tile already just so you could see what it looks like. And I tried very hard. One of the things she told us was not to go to the very edge of the leaf. So down here, you go just within the very edge of the leaf so that when you put the black background on, it goes right up to the leaf and you don't have white space. If you put it on and it goes over the edge of the leaf, you'll, you may have a line of white that goes around the leaf and then the color you have for your background. So that was another tip. I did most of this because I wanted it to dry so that I could then show you how we apply the MX uh, 54 and it is dry now, but it takes a while. And if you're in a humid area, you can dry it with a hair dryer, and that will speed up the process. I prefer to kind of let it do it on its own, but it just depends. Okay, so I'm going to put you down a little so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to open it up. I have a little dish here with water in it. My brushes are dedicated to resist. I don't use them for anything other than resist, and I have a very thin brush, which I didn't use and I probably should have. I have a medium brush. I keep them in a plastic container. I have a real fat one and I have kind of a medium sort of like a four or something. So those are my brushes. Okay, so I'm going to open this up, take the plastic wrap off. Okay, and see it has a little gook on it. Just put it over there. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my brush and I'm going to, here, I'm going to put it right here so you can see it. Can you, oh, maybe you can see it here. Let me move this over a little more. There. Okay. And I'm just going to dip my, my brush into it to get my brush, make sure my brush is pliable because it isn't always pliable. All righty. And then I'm going to dip it into my uh, resist and I'm going to be very careful not to get it too, too thin or too um, thick. After you've dipped it in water and cleaned it, it could be too thin or too thick. You're going to go just within, see there? I went just within the edge. Let me do it on this side too before I turn this. Just within the edge there, so like this. Now, my leaf isn't perfect. I have this little dot sticking out. When I put the MX-54 over it, hopefully it'll hide that. And, and so this is an opportunity if you have a, a horrible leaf and you don't like it. This is your opportunity to fix it and have a leaf that you're happy with. And it, it's really cool because you can put the resist on and make the leaf the way you want it. And then, um, here we go. And then when it comes off and you've got the MX-54, you can very carefully paint in a new leaf. Okay. So I put it back in the water and cleaned it off well and just wiped it off. And now I'm going to do the stem and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make sure I've got a nice pliable brush to do this with. And I'm just going to do the stem. I'm going down the middle of the stem. Whatever you don't cover is going to be whatever color you do for your background. So if you want it to all be black, great. If you want it to all be, um, this is from the one up above there. Make it a little thicker. If you want it all to be um, uh, blue, that's fine too. But if, if it's not covered with this um, resist, it will come out 
a horrible color. The other thing is, see here how I have this leaf that's really ragged? You can either smooth it now or you can wait. And when you put the resist on it, I mean the uh, MX-54, the black, the background on it, you can fix it then and I'll show you how. So that's why I did one like that. Okay, so that's all done. Now I would have to wait for these to dry, but these are already dry. And so what I would do at this point, especially if I had a big piece, like the big piece I was working on and I was doing the whole background, is I would take a picture of the piece with the red on. Because I will tell you right now, oh, I see a spot right here where I want to make sure I have red on it because I, yeah, there we go. Um, because you will likely forget that you have, um, oops, I just saw another one. You will likely forget that you have um, the one piece on there. And if you forget that and it goes into the kiln, it's going to cause a real mess. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to make sure I mentioned to you. Take a picture, take a photo. Um, I did that and it saved me because I almost forgot a, a whole leaf and it got buried, you know, it would have gotten buried. And I remember by looking at the photo and I counted my leaves and, oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. The other thing that's important is when you do something like this, if you have small things like the stem, you should attach it to a large thing. That will keep, when you pull it up, after you put the background on, when you pull it up, it, it will get it together and it'll make it much easier uh, and you won't leave anything on, especially small things, because it's easy to leave a piece of small stuff on here like this little this little piece here at the end see that right there right here if i want to make sure i get that i should attach it to come here you i should attach it to this oh that's too thin you can tell it's thin if you can like really see through it you kind of want it like this like i have there it's not very see-through the other thing i want to mention is before you Get ready to put this back on. You should hold it up to the light, turn it on an angle, and just look down it and make sure you don't have any obvious ridges around the edges of the leaves where the resist lifts up and it'll form a dam because that will cause problems for you too. Okay. I'm following my notes very specifically. <laughs> All righty. So now we've got this all done. We're going to apply the MX-54. Okay, I'm going to put this back on here. Put my lid on. Tight. And I'm going to move all this away. And I have everything there that I need. I have things for taking off the, the this. Now these two are still wet, so I'm going to come just down like about, I'll show you, let me get a pen here. I'm gonna come down about this far because everything else is kind of wet, okay? Just so you can see. Alrighty, move this out of the way. Bring over my tile. Now, you need to make one of these. Um, I have those little rubber bands uh, out in the garage. This is um, this is a little pom pommy thing that you have to make in order to pounce the MX54 background color on your piece. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I made this. Um, ideally, I would get those little rubber bands that I have, but you can also use tape and just put tape around it, and it works fine. We did it at the school. This is what it's made of. You can get a bunch of these and. You can also get this. Now, years ago, I thought this was stupid and I didn't buy it. And um, I was wrong. Because <laughs> now when I used it at the school, I realized you get a beautiful, even background. So it's a foam here. I'll put it over here to see it. It's a foam. It stretches. Reminds me of the foam that you put over, used to put over... Um, uh, hangers to keep them from slipping way back you know when I was a kid um, it's called sports wrap get it at a sports store so I went to Dunham's you can go to Dick 
sporting goods. You could go to any place that sells um, a lot of sporting stuff, a lot of it. And this is a, called a pre-wrap. And you can just um, buy this or you can order it on uh, uh, Amazon. And I got two of them. It's, it's, there's a lot here. I probably will never use them all. But I thought if I ever had a class or something where we needed them. And you cut two strips of this. Like this. And then you cut another one. Two la layers. Okay, like that. And you put them together. And you want the softest part of this. You don't want these angles, these lines. So you're going to bend this in half. So see, this is the whole thing. And I'm going to bend it in half. And I'm going to use this side to put in here like this. And then I'm just going to twist. You might want to pull up the sides a little bit. And then I'm going to twist because you don't want those to hit your piece, okay? And then you can take tape. If you don't have any rubber bands, just take some tape and put it around this. And I just start like this, and then I just go around like that. Ta-da, nothing fancy. And then that way you're gonna use this in order to pounce, okay? So this is my tile that I'm going to mix my color on. Now I've chosen a, a dark black green because I have another one that I did with black and I'm using up a lot of my black and I like my black. I don't want to use it all up. Um, I mix a fair amount. I found when I put too little down that I spent a lot of time um, remixing and adding to it. So this is a fair amount and I have a dropper here. And it always has to be powder that you start with. Start out with several drops on it. And you start mixing. Kind of like mixing paint. The only difference with this is it's kind of fizzy, I thought. And it sort of, it seems like it doesn't mix as well as whatever you use as a medium for your paint. It takes a while. But it's good that it takes a while. Because you want to make sure you get all the little crumbs in there. Just emptying that out. See how much I've got there. You're going to want it to be drippy. So um, I don't think you really, you know, if you're used to mixing paints and things, I don't think that this is, um, you're going to get it too drippy. But you might. And if you do, then that's a problem. You have to add more powder to it. Okay, get this over here. And you really want to mix it. You don't, and you can do this on a, a, a tile, you know, the grounding tile if you want to, to do it, but you don't have to, okay? And then you pull it all together and you see if it drips. Uh, it's not dripping quite enough, maybe. Let me try it one more time. Well, that's pretty good, okay. Okay, so then I close up my MX-54. Always close up the bottle you're not using because I am guilty of spilling stuff. You can use lavender oil next. It can be imitation or regular. It doesn't have to be the good stuff. And you're just going to put a couple of drops on here, mix it in. And you want this really... That's your drying agent for sure. That'll help dry, and but it'll also help it keep open while you're using it, you know, so it's kind of it serves two purposes. It's it, it, Lavender, though, does tend to dry things up, I think, isn't it? Yeah, then we're getting there. Okay. I think that's pretty good. You don't want it too thin because if it's too thin, uh, maybe one more drop. If it's too thin, it won't... Um, it'll leave the white tile showing underneath and you'll have these blotches. If it's too thick, I have never had a problem with it being too thick. So here we go. Okay, that's that's that. So I'm gonna move this to the side now. I'm gonna bring back our leaves. 
And I'm gonna move it so that you can see what I'm doing. There. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off really good. Just set it over here. Close up my lavender oil. Get my pouncer, okay? And I'm just gonna put, put it in the paint and then pounce a little here so that I get it nice and even. And then I'm gonna start pouncing over my piece. Oh, this is better than the one I did this morning, that's for sure. And you see how it covers it completely? That's what you want for coverage. I'm so pleased that I didn't make it thicker than this. Because this morning I had one that was too thin and I kept trying to make it thicker and it just wasn't working. But you see also why I say, make sure that you take some time and take a picture of what you have so that you can very easily find what you were working on and find all the little resist pieces underneath, okay? And this is all you do. And you wanna make sure that it's even. You don't want any, see I've got a couple white spots, you don't want those. That for me is because I pounce heavy in those spots and you don't want that, you want it to be light. So just try to pounce very lightly and take it to the edge. I may not have enough here to take it to the edge, but I'll show you what I have, okay? All righty. And then you just take it to the edge and go all the way around. And when you go to the edge, make sure that if you have a tile, because I learned this the hard way, my tile has it like a white edge on it. Make sure that you kind of do it on an angle a little bit so that it really covers well. And make sure it's covered everything. Don't keep going over things a million times. That will not help you. And see, I'm going kind of on an angle to get the edge there to make sure it's nice and even. You have to be very careful how you handle this. It's going to be wet for a while. If it's humid in your area, you can dry it with a hair dryer if you wish, but you don't have to. You can clean this up by simply wiping it off, or I use turpentine. I throw this out when I'm done. Okay? Um, let me get my Kleenex here. I'm just going to wipe off my knife because I don't want my knife to get hardened on there. And there's a little on the end of this. I'm just going to take it off. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to set it aside. It probably won't dry before we're done in here, but I do have a fan going, so maybe it will. Here's one that I've dried um, that I did a quick and dirty on last night so that you'd be able to see how it works. So this one's done with black. And see, unfortunately, I made it, like I said, I made it too thin. So here I have everything covered, right? And um, I should mention that if you have a big piece, like I do here, I put a couple flowers on here, that you don't have to cover everything. When you're doing the, um, the, the pouncing, um, if you have a, a big section like my bird here, let me show you my bird, okay? When I came around this side of the bird here, oh, can you see here? When I came around this side of the bird here, up in here, what I did was I only painted in about this far with the resist, about an inch. That's it. So I could easily see the edge to pick it up. So I'm picking it up. There we go. Now, if you have little scraggly pieces on here, you could probably get them off with them. And, and see, I'm just taking it up with this. Now, our teacher told us if it starts going two directions, oops, excuse my reach, like that, you should cut one of them, like maybe I'll cut this one, and then that way the other one comes off easily. And you just put these aside. This is the the old, um, ah, the old stuff. You may also need a needle to get it up and get it going. That's not uncommon. Um, I've always been able to do it pretty much, and you can just pull it this way. Just don't get your hand so that you're, rubbing against the background color, see? This is one fire on here, by the way, so it's not gonna look as dramatic as my animal did. But see, this is all right here, this is all still that stuff. So I'll show you how to get it all off. All righty, here, 
pull it up and here. Now let's say, and I don't know if it worked on here. I hope it did. But let's say you have an area where you smeared it and it really turned out horrible and you don't even want it on there, but it's already fired in. You can cover it with the MX-54 and it will disappear. So using the MX-54 seems to allow you to um, um, do a lot of things. Oh, now see there, I, I, I screwed up. I didn't get it off, but I'll show you how to get it off. And um, it allows you to um, correct a lot of errors, too. So here we go. I should grab with this hand. Um, now, where are my other leaves? See, I should have taken a picture of this. There's one here. There we go. And there's a little more up here, but I don't know where. See, if you scratch it, then you're in trouble. There we go. So you don't want to scratch the MX-54. That's why you want to take a picture so you know where you left off. So I just did this for the heck of it. I This is not fine art by any means. Okay, so I put these on. Now let me show you how you can get some of this off if you have some of these issues. Good thing I had some issues, huh? You need some toothpicks. Okay. And with the black, oh wait, this is part of a thing here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let me get these guys out of here, this stuff from the resist. Okay. So if you have resist on, you can just keep using your toothpick to get it off like this. It will also come off with water. So if you have a little little guy like this and you dip him on your Kleenex or something so you're not getting a lot of water, you can just... You don't want to leave any black specks on here. If you do, they will fire in. So you got to get rid of them. So now I'm using this to just get rid of the black. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's real easy to get rid of it. You just keep doing it like this and it'll come right off. And up here, I got excited, I guess, when I was doing Now, see all those black specks on there, though? I don't know if you can see. Let me bring it up to you. See all the black specks? And keep in mind, this background was too thin. It should be a solid color like this. This one is a little less solid, so I would probably have to do two coats on this. Okay, in order to get those off, I would really, first of all, you take and you have a like a mop brush, or a makeup brush that's not used for makeup and put it on like that and just get some of the specks off. And then here, I want to make this leaf maybe more more straight lined, okay? And maybe I want this side to have not that there. I want it like this. So I have a little napkin I can wipe my stuff in. Okay, now... Here's an example. Let me just, okay, here's an example of the white. See the white there? And hold it down a little right there. You can leave it. You can fill it in on the next fire. You can decide not to fill it in on the next fire. It's entirely up to you. But whatever you decide to do, once it's fired, this is gonna be pure black in the background. So you want to change the shape of your, see here, I've got a little more, there, that's better. Take it off. And this is how you go around and clean it up. And then you make sure that you get it all off. Whew. 
That one's not bad. That one's not bad. Remember, this was the first fire, so I just slapped it on. I didn't do anything real fancy. It's hard to scrape and get those little points and things that you want, so you really have to do it slowly and take your time. And then I don't think there's anything here. No, nope, there isn't. So um, I'm going to go over here and just sort of... Whoops. <laughs> that doesn't look very good. But I can fix this up on a future fire. As long as I get it the way I want it now, that's the main thing. Now, this is already dry. So if I wanted to go back in, I could paint a little on here before I put it in the kiln. And I, like I said, this is probably not the best um, example, but at least it's an example for you. And I could get my brush and I could get my paints. But you want to make sure all that black is off of there before you do any of this. You don't want any of that to get into your piece. See, there's a piece right there. Where's my toothpick? Here it is. So I've got to get that piece off. This piece here, this piece here. Yeah, let me show you here up closer. Here are pieces right here, see there? Oh, too close. Here, right here, see that? Gotta get that off, gotta get that off. Here's one. Here's one. And then you take the big mop brush and just brush it, and that should help. And then down in here, if you want to, you probably could add more color, but you have to be careful to stay away from what you have the black on. If you get too close to what you have the black on, it's going to be a problem. So most people just fire it, but see, you can paint. And here, if I wanted to add a little bit of, let's say in that spot, I decided Oh, here, let me move it up a little. Right there, it's white. See how white it is? Oops, see how white it is? Right here. So then I might want to take just a little bit of green and just put a little green there, just so I have some color. But it's up to you. I wouldn't, at this point, I would probably fire this and then come back and play with it more. And here, where I went out of the lines here, I might try to sharpen that up a little or shape it up a little, or I might try to give this a little curve and then next time I fire it, and the next time I fire it, then I will add some color back. Okay. If you're watching on the replay and you know whether or not you can use a second coat, of the wet, uh, wet grounding or you just use your brush on the second coat, I'd appreciate uh, the answer to that. But um, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This is, uh, this is the, the background with the, with the wet grounding on. I'll fire it just so you can see what it looks like. So um, pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I'll see you next time. Program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.